Hi, my name is Kevin Housel, and I'm a hydrologic technician with the USGS office in Middleton, Wisconsin. I would like to take a few minutes to talk about making readings and inspections for gauge sensors using SWAMI. For this screencast, we will look at the following sensors. Staff gauge, pressure transducer, reference point, and a crest stage gauge. For this example, all sensors we will be looking at are in the sensor inspection task. We will begin entering readings for a staff gauge. Start by clicking on the staff to highlight the staff gauge. You will notice you can go straight to the gauge readings and an inspection is not required before entering staff gauge reading. After clicking on the readings button, you can enter gauge readings from your staff gauge. You can manually enter the time by clicking the blank field next to time or you can click on the blue time to have the field automatically populated. Next, enter the gauge reading from your staff gauge and the accuracy of the gauge reading. After entering the time, staff gauge reading, and the uncertainty associated with your reading, click Add to populate the gauge reading. After the gauge readings have been added, click Done to return to the sensor inspection screen. You can click on the inspection button for the staff, which provides a large comment box to provide any descriptive field notes regarding the staff gauge. The next sensor we will review is the non-submersible pressure transducer. When clicking on the pressure transducer, you will notice that we cannot enter gauge readings as the button is not active. Prior to making a pressure transducer reading, you are required to fill out the system type and if the orifice has been serviced, noted by the asterisk symbol in the inspection page to activate the reading button. We will start by clicking on the inspection button. You can select the system type by using the drop down arrow to the right of the field. Make sure you select nitrogen, air, or other. Air is generally used for self-purging systems that utilize internal tanks and jars of desiccant. You can see the associated fields here when you use air, allowing you to note the condition of your desiccant and whether you have changed it out. Nitrogen is generally used when you have safe purge systems and actual tanks of nitrogen. You can see the associated fields here when you use nitrogen, allowing you to note whether you changed the tanks as well as your tank settings. Both selections provide an orifice service field, allowing you to note how you cleaned and or purged. If you have selected cleaning and or purging, it will pop up a time serviced field. You can manually enter by clicking in the box and selecting the time accordingly, or you can have it auto populate the time tag by clicking on the blue time service label. Use the comment field to document any observations and or issues related with the pressure system and the orifice itself. Once you have completed the inspection, click on the done button. Now your readings button has become active, it's no longer grayed out. After clicking on the readings button, you can enter the gauge readings of your pressure transducer from your data logger. You can manually enter the time by clicking in the blank field next to time, or you can click on the blue time to have the field automatically populated with the current time. Next, enter your gauge reading from your pressure transducer from your data logger and the accuracy of your gauge reading. After the time, pressure transducer reading and the uncertainty associated with your reading, click on add to populate the gauge reading. After the gauge readings have been added, click done to return to the sensor inspection screen. The next sensor we'll review is a reference point reading. Similar to the staff gauge presented earlier, gauge readings are entered the same way as demonstrated in the staff gauge section of the screencast. You'll notice you can go straight to the gauge readings and an inspection is not required before entering reference gauge readings, but you must show your work. 
The inspection for the reference point gauges provides you a large comment box to show your math to determine the stage of the reference point used. SWAMI also provides an automated way to calculate your gauge height readings. This is dependent on how you have your sensors set up in site visit, requiring measuring points to be set up and updated. After you click on the blue time to auto populate your time, click on the blue read. You should see your RP elevation is filled in. Add your tape measurement in the measurement field, any corrections, the type of correction, and the accuracy, and click done when you are finished. Click add to populate the gauge reading. After the gauge readings have been added, click done to return to the sensor inspection screen. Lastly, we will look at crest stage gauge reading. Similar to the pressure transducer, the readings button is not active and you have to inspect the crest stage gauge before entering a reading. In the crest stage gauge inspection page, populate the empty fields with the drop down menus for each field. Add any necessary comments to the comment box such as change your cork, mark at 1.25 feet, etc. After all the fields have been populated, click done to return to the sensor inspection page. You will notice after filling out the crest age gauge inspection, we can now enter readings, similar to RP readings depending on whether or not your site visit utilizes measuring points for CSGs will determine how you enter your stick readings. In the readings page, if you do not have measuring points set up for CSGs, you will enter the gauge height of the mark on the CSG gauge. This will require you knowing the reference crest stage gauge index elevation as determined from levels. In the readings page, if you have measuring points set up for CSGs, you will enter the taped measurement of the cork mark on the CSG gauge. Record the measurement in the reading field and provide an estimated date of when the mark occurred, if you have some prior knowledge to when that peak occurred. To provide an approximate date when the mark occurred, click the calculator in the empty field of estimated date. A calendar will pop up and allowing you to select the estimated date. If you do not know the estimated date, leave this field blank. Once the reading and estimated date have been populated, click Add followed by Done to return to the sensor inspections page. This concludes our demonstration of these sensor inspections. For demonstrations of other sensor inspections, See some of the other screencast videos. If you have questions on making gauge readings and inspections with these sensors, please contact the SWAMI help group at the email address shown or visit the FCIS webpage at the address shown.